Hello, everybody. Well, today, let's talk about the big white elephant in the room. Yeah, the big white elephant. The Nissan pickup that we bought. I've had many of you that quiz me about it, wanting to know why I chose this Nissan. Wanting to know the price I gave for this Nissan. To me, you're surprised. This truck is not brand new. Nope, this is a second hand. I laugh. I watch you all write comments, assuming, assuming that we went and bought a brand new truck. Let's talk about this truck then. Let's talk about why I bought it. Let's talk about all of the things about this Nissan Navara pickup. Many of you are gonna say, James, I thought you were a die-hard Toyota fan. And I am. I love Toyotas without a doubt. I think they are some of the most well-crafted vehicles out there. Without a doubt, I really like Toyotas. I have a Toyota Tundra back in the US. A very powerful truck, 4x4, the Crew Max. I like it. I mean, I absolutely love that truck. It's like a hobby vehicle for me as well. I do things to fix it up and um, customize it, you know. And I also own a old Toyota back in the U.S. It is one of the original Gen 1 Toyota 4Runners, all original SR5. Never even had the top removed off of it. For the ones that you don't know, that you can remove a fiberglass shell off of those, and then it has roll bars from the factory. But we're not here to talk about that. Right here in the Philippines, I own a Toyota Hilux Surf, second generation. Um, them and the Toyota 4Runner both share the same chassis, different trucks. This is a diesel 4x4, and the diesel one, naturally because of the torques and all, is a heavier built truck. But we're not here to talk about that. We're talking about why I bought a Nissan. Now, first of all, I want to tell some of you out there watching this video. I'm going to talk about the Southeast Asian market. I'm going to talk about what's available here in the Philippines. I'm not re referencing to what's available in the U.S. I'm not trying to compare this truck to a Nissan model sold in the U.S. I am referencing what is sold here in Southeast Asia. So we're not going to talk about Chevy Duramaxes and we're not going to talk about Dodge Rams and Ford Power Strokes. We're not going to talk about that. We could talk about that, and I could break your little hearts on some of you that's like, go America, go America. You know, I drive that all-American Dodge. I drive that all-American Ford, that all-American Chevy. That's long ways from being all-American anymore. If you want to hit a note on that, the Toyota Tundra, built in San Antonio, Texas, is built with more American-made parts than any other brand on the road in the United States. 
So put that in your pipe and smoke it. But the Nissan Navara. Nissan Navara VL package. The VL package comes on the 4x4s. That is the way they come. The 4x4 model, which is what this is, is dressed out. A lot of the options that the VL has is not available on the two-wheel drive versions. So you see a lot of these trucks on the road, but they're a more stripped down version of this truck. The 4x4 is the premium truck with the premium package. In this VL model, you get the full size display. That can be available on one other model of the Nissan truck here, but it is the standard option here on the 4x4 VL model. This truck is automatic. You can get it automatic or manual. This is a seven speed automatic. Now, one of the first things that I did my homework on was to make sure that these trucks did not have a constant velocity, a CVT transmission. I do not want that. They are horrible in every brand out there. And Nissan's one of them that's got big problems with it back in the US, as well as Honda and many other manufacturers. But no, this is your regular old school automatic transmission, seven speed, and it feels very responsive. Another thing this truck comes with is push button start with a fob. You just put the fob on your side in your pocket, keep it near you. You can get in this truck without a key, without having to push the fob, just touch the door handle. Also, when you're exiting a truck, all you have to do is just touch the door handle. No digging out a key or digging out a fob required. This truck also comes with selectable four-wheel drive. So that's another very nice feature of it as well. And it can be on the fly. So that's pretty cool. And that's another feature that I do like about it. Comes with the 360 degree camera all the way around. Gives you a bird's eye view right here. Nissan was one of the first ones to put this feature out and they're making it standard on more and more of their vehicles all the time. Another thing that I really liked about this truck is it has steering wheel controls. Back in the US on my Tundra, I really enjoy my steering wheel controls. On my uh, Chevy Duramax, I really enjoy my steering wheel controls. Now, under the hood, this being a Asian model, This truck comes with a 2.5 liter turbocharged diesel. I absolutely love the smooth power of this diesel. Very impressed. It is no slouch at all on the road. Extremely responsive. It'll surprise you. For a 2.5 liter diesel, it will surprise you. It will dart on out there when you need it to and do what you need it to do. Another one of the features that I really like about this truck that the other models did not offer here was rear AC vents. Those are not just a fan. That is actual climate control right there. So that was another thing that this offered that the others didn't. Coming with the bed liner already when we bought it. I don't know if that's an original or aftermarket. Honestly, I cannot tell you, but I was glad that it was there. Now, I am not a big fan of over-the-bed bed liners because underneath here, this is what you get, grime and dirt. It's going to eat that up over time and destroy the paint around the top of the bed. So I do not like over-the-rail bed liners such as this at all. That was also what was uh, done damage to trucks I've owned in the past there in the U.S., that it would literally shake there with dirt and grime underneath it and grind the paint completely off so i just may be looking to replace this or i may go inside in here and cut this bed liner just nice and neat and clean take my time where it's not shabby looking and remove that from over the rail so that's something i'm not a fan of 
One of the other things I like here also, it has a locking tailgate. And you can find toppers for these small trucks here in Asia and in the Philippines. So it is possible to get a, a topper on here and then you have a locking tailgate, a locking topper, and that's pretty nice. And that may be something we do, even though it's a pickup, we may want to use it semi like a SUV sometimes, having that topper to keep our things dry and secure when we're out on the road doing road trips. We're looking and getting one right now. Uh, once again, I'm gonna need this out of my way because I need the clamp along the rail and I can't get the clamps on there with this over the bed bed liner. Another reason that I would probably need to modify it. I wanna go somewhere, I must might wanna ride in some like Cadillac comfort, you know? And this truck is noted for having an exceptionally good ride. All the way around this truck, there was things I liked about them. I kept passing them on the road. We were out looking for a Toyota. We were actually even looking at the Ford Rangers. I really wasn't that interested in the Zuzus or the Colorados. They're actually the same truck. I really wasn't interested in the Mitsubishi Strata. Although some of them are pretty good looking trucks. Uh, I just know things about Mitsubishi. They've always left a sour taste in my mouth. But the Nissan, they're a good truck. They've had a good name for a lot of years. In fact, at one point in time in the truck, small truck market, they were like the most highly commended truck. They made some engines in the past that was absolutely impeccable. And I'm sure that this little diesel right here is one of them. Well, we just about made a deal on a Fortuner. We met with the people, um, but the price just seemed so steep for a vehicle that was going to be as old as it was and I'm like you know what this is just um, a few miles away from just being another old vehicle on the road again just a little bit more money we could really step up many year models newer so we discussed that and we looked at that and we come home and we did our math and I told Melinda you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go look for a Nissan Navara I said I have been reading on them and I passed them on the road and I said, you know what, that, that's a pretty good looking truck. It's a kind of tough looking truck. It's not as tough looking as the Ford Raptor, but come on, the money is ridiculous for that. I have a friend that's got an off-road shop over here. He said, yeah, they're an awesome truck, but they're fuel hogs and, um, and they have a few issues, they have some problems. And he had quite a few Ford Rangers in there with problems. For the money, it kept me leaning towards the Nissan because they had all these things. The rear vents, the power fold-in mirrors, all the controls on the steering wheel. So one more thing that leaned me towards the Nissan. I got in the Nissan, I said in the other model vehicles, this, the whole feel when I sit down in it, the whole way everything was, it was the truck that I personally was most comfortable in the haggling process began. Well, I told them I want to go on and look at a few others and then I'm going to come back. You know, they're trying to put the pressure cell on me to not leave, trying to make a deal. As I'm walking out the door, the price starts going down as I'm heading out onto the street. I said, well, we'll see. And so I went to the Nissan dealer, to the dealership. I talked to a very nice lady there and we talked about these trucks and all. And she said, I told her the price. She said, that's a good deal for that truck. And she said, right now, with the current world situation, they have not taken any delivery on any of these trucks. The plane models, the two wheel drive models, the more stripped down models, all of that, they had, and they could get. And they could get them in from Manila down here to Iloilo within just a couple of weeks or even just a few days. But she said that there is a very limited amount of the VL 4x4 right now, low of miles it has, and uh, kilometers here in the Philippines, that it's practically a brand new truck. And that was correct. Uh, it would have been equal to about 15,000 US miles was all that was on this truck. And said, you should go try to buy that truck. I told her that's exactly the way I felt. We headed on back air and the deal began. And Mel and I 
we priced what this truck would cost at the dealership brand new. And at the dealership brand new, it was gonna be a little bit over 1.6 million pesos. Now I'll give a conversion on the screen of the con current conversion rate of what that would come to in dollars. And this truck, I had got them down to 1.1 million pesos. And once again here, I'm gonna give you the conversion rate. So you're gonna see out of buying this truck that was one year old of the money that was saved by somebody owning it one year. That's the story on that. So it was a new finance repo. The guy that bought it had it hardly no time. Um, and that saved us a huge chunk of money. And there you have it. And uh, that's the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help me God. Take care and we'll see you all on the next one.